law. On your side tonight with Jamie Bowl starts now. Thanks for sticking with us here at 730. All right, let's start with a question this half hour. Which county in North Carolina has the most manufacturing jobs? Well, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, number three on the list is Catawba County with just under 25,000. Number two on the list, Guilford County, just under 32,000. Number one is Mecklenburg County with nearly 37,000 manufacturing jobs here in our area. And we're about to add to that number. Siemens Energy says it will be adding 475 manufacturing jobs here in Charlotte. The company will be producing large power transformers. Siemens says they will strengthen and expand our electrical grid to incorporate more renewable energy while meeting growing energy demands. It's continued encouraging news for a sector that has really taken a beating for about four decades now, not only here in the Carolinas, but actually across the country. There was a time when these kinds of stories were being told on a regular basis. Randy Stillwell is trying to be optimistic. I hope everything works out for us. He's one of more than 1,200 in Lenore who work under the furniture brand's umbrella, including Broyhill, Lane, Thomasville, and more. Randy works at the Broyhill division. Indications are that brand is doing okay. I hope so. Maybe. But you're hearing maybe some others are not so good. Yeah. People are nervous because they see a lot of this around town. Many jobs went overseas. Show him what you say. It does make you sad. That story from 2013. Now, back in 1990, more than one in four North Carolinians drew a paycheck from a manufacturing facility. By 2019, though, that had dropped to just one in ten. But of late, we have seen a bit of a resurgence. This graph right here shows manufacturing jobs nationally since 2019. You obviously see the big, massive drop here at the start of the pandemic. But since then, we have got been adding jobs and actually completely rebounded, actually adding about 180,000 jobs over the last five years. Now, here in North Carolina, the manufacturing rebound not quite to 2019 levels. We've bounced around a little bit lately. But at the moment, if you look at the graph here, we're down about 8,000 jobs from what we saw five years ago. So that's why the Siemens news is really encouraging for our area. And earlier today, we spoke to Tracy Dodson. She is Charlotte's assistant city manager and economic development director. Tracy, I appreciate you taking time to talk to us. My first question for you here is how hard was it to close this deal with Siemens? Uh, was there a lot of competition for it? In a deal like this, there's always competition. Um, companies look at a variety of factors when they're considering a location. Now, what does play in our favor in this particular instance was that we had a long history with Siemens with their existing facility, and we've had a long, good relationship with Siemens here in Charlotte. Uh, let me ask you about this. We, we mentioned it in our setup, right? We think of Charlotte, we, we think of Banktown, we think of FinTech jobs. But in the setup, we pointed out that Charlotte actually has the most manufacturing jobs in the state. Uh, are you comfortable with the diversity that we have in our economy right now? I think we learned back in the Great Recession that we really needed to make sure that we were diversified. And so as we look at new companies coming in from a headquarter project that might be in financial services to Siemens to everything in between, we look at the salary ranges, we look at the types of jobs, we look at the education level needed, because we really want to make sure that we are delivering job opportunities for all of our residents and we're not singularly focused in one particular area area. Uh, given the stress that we're seeing in the office space right now with work from home, are you putting added emphasis now on manufacturing? No, I don't think we're putting added emphasis on it. I think that we are, we're still looking holistically as where those opportunities are and where they make sense mm -hmm. um, and, you know, how we can continue to balance. We have a lot, I think, for our region, we probably see more manufacturing-type jobs than we see office jobs right now. But when they make sense for our community, we go after them equally as hard. Yeah, I want to ask you more about that. Is it harder to recruit the traditional company that needs office space? Are they reluctant to take on a big footprint right now? 
you see less office deals right now than you definitely see of other opportunities. Um, like I said, we see across our region more manufacturing mm -hmm. um, jobs. A large part of that is because as a region, we have a lot more of those opportunities. We have a lot more land opportunities. Um, the office deals are slower because I think a lot of office users, while they're stabilizing, it's still a little bit unknown. How much space do you need? Um, what is kind of the, the future of talent and their requirements on working from home or even a hybrid? Do you see us cycling back to the time where we have people in the office five days a week? I don't know that we will ever get back to five days in the office. I do see the shift where, you know, we're three days strong mm -hmm. and we see people moving back to four days. Um, I think there's always going to be a little bit of the hybrid in that shift of, you know, it's, I see less of the you're in at 8 o'clock and you're out at 5 o'clock, but I do see more days in the office um, and trending upwards. Well, Tracy, congratulations on the Siemens news, and I appreciate you taking a few minutes to uh, talk to us about it. Okay. Thank you so much. All right, we're on your side tonight now with an unanswered question. Where is Asia Degree? It's a question her family, the community, and us here at WBTV have been asking now for 24 years. Asha, now known as Shelby's sweetheart, vanished overnight Valentine's Day 2000. She was just nine years old. On the morning of February the 14th, 2000, Asha's mom got up to wake the kids up to get them ready for school on a Monday morning, which was Valentine's Day. Uh, they realized Asha was gone, wasn't in her bed, wasn't in the house. They called family members who lived close by and then called the sheriff's office, which started uh, an immediate search for Asia, and until this day she hasn't been found. Investigators believe Asia left her bedroom with a book bag. Two people separately reported seeing a little girl walking along Highway 18 around 4 in the morning. A year and a half later, in 2001, her book bag was found 30 miles away in Burke County. And here's what they found inside that book bag. It was a concert t-shirt featuring boy band New Kids on the Block and a children's book written by Dr. Seuss. Neither of these belong to Asia. But the book was from the library at Asia School. That's Falston Elementary. Another potential lead was released to the public in 2016. Take a look at the picture here. Asia may have been seen getting into a dark green 1970s model Lincoln Continental Mark IV or a Ford Thunderbird with rust around the wheel wells. Investigators released these two photos in hopes of jogging the memories of people who may know something. Now, in the last 24 years, the Cleveland County Sheriff's Office and the FBI, they've received more than 700 tips in this case. None, though, have led to finding Asia, which led to even more questions. Why would a young girl leave her home in the middle of the night? Did anything lead up to her disappearance? We do have video of Asia's basketball game on February 12, 2000, two days before she disappeared. She's number 45 there in the video. That day, Asia's team lost, which didn't sit well with the nine-year-old's competitive spirit. Her mother, Aquila, wonders if the loss had anything to do with her daughter leaving, even though she seemed to have gotten over it. And the whole team was upset. That was their first loss of the season. They thought they wasn't in first place no more. She tried to fake the injury at the end of the game. Um, but uh, by 1 o'clock, by 3 o'clock, they were fine. They was running around playing white little girls once we convinced them that they were still in first place because that was only their first loss. Mm. Her parents uh, could have never imagined, though, that just two days after that game, that would be the last time they would see their daughter. I sat down with the Degree family three years ago as they hold out hope to see Asia again one day. Here's some of that interview. How do you approach these anniversaries? I mean, how do you, how do you wrap your head around it still? It's the closer it gets, the harder it gets, and you know you got to deal with the public, and we just appreciate y'all taking time out to come and you know, keep it out there also. A lot of people forget about it. We keep in mind that it's not about us, it's about her. And to keep her name out, keep her story out, because we don't know if Cleveland County or the FBI, if they believe they're looking for remains. We believe our daughter's still alive. So we're expecting a person until you bring me 99.9% .9 proof that something remains as hers. 
I'm not going to believe it. Our faith is the main reason why we haven't went crazy. That we are able to still work, that we are able to do every interview every year, and that the only reason why we've actually even getting through this. Do you think of her like the first thing when you wake up in the morning? Oh yes, first thing you think of, uh, wake up, last thing you think of when you close your eyes. And like they always ask me at work, how in the world do you work? I use work as an escape. Try to stay busy. You know, try to do this thing. I go to work and. I try to just do little stuff on the side. I stay in the yard doing something all the time, just stay busy. This is worse than death. Because at least with death, you've got closure. You can go to a grave site or you can, if you've got to earn at home, whatever. And, but for us, we can't mourn. You can't give up. Only thing we got is hope. So, but there's those times, like when they find other children, you be thinking, it, it goes through your mind, why not us? And then, then of course, I don't watch a lot of the news because, unfortunately, it's a lot of stuff about children. Yeah. And then, of course, there's those times when another child, another bulletin will come on your phone or whatever, the Amber Alert, another child is taken or another child is missing, and you just cringe. Something where you would just prefer at this point people don't ask, we'll tell you if there's something to say? Sometimes, yeah, sometimes. But as long as people ask me questions about it, whatever, I know they're thinking about it. So that's a good thing. They're still looking. That's a good thing. They are still looking. The Cleveland County Sheriff's Office and the FBI have not lost sight of Aisha's case. Detective Tim Adams shared this message with us today. So it's not a cold case, and we're not going to let it go. This is something that we really feel like that can be solved, and we're determined to solve it. Asia's family and investigators believe someone knows something about her disappearance. 24 years later, if that person is you, you are urged to come forward. Asia, 33 years old now. This is what she may look like today. Call the Cleveland County Sheriff's Office, the FBI, or you can submit an online tip at tips.fbi.gov if you have any information. Coming up next here on On Your Side Tonight. Because they think that you're sick, they don't want to be sick. And that leads to sick shaming in the workplace. What is it? What should you do about it? We're getting some answers for you. Rachel? And if you have any Valentine's Day evening plans, temperatures are falling back into the 50s. We'll be in the upper 40s by the time the night is wrapping up. 30s by tomorrow morning. A look ahead at the rest of the week and your weekend forecast.